All right, college football week two recap. The starting 11, we'll call it. It's 11 topics that we are going to draft out. We're not going to do the timer, okay? Because I figured out last week that some of these only took like 30 seconds and some took a little longer than two minutes. But here's the thing. We just got to fit it into the window. Well, well, we'll see how it fits in the window. Yeah, we'll, we'll worry about that later. The show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can watch and wager on games at any of Tunica's five, soon to be six, incredible sports books, Horseshoe, Gold Strike, Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot, soon to be the Fitz Casino. You can get more information over at tunicatravel.com. You can get all of our picks at winningcureseverything.com. Let's jump into this bad boy. Uh, you want to go first? You want to draft first? Mm, do I want to? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah, you, I do, you I run do wanna, in first. I do want to go first. My number one takeaway from this Saturday, this week of college football that we experienced is college football is broken. Not just college football. All football is broken. It has a broken rule, and it has to change, and it refuses to change itself. The rule I'm talking about is the fumble out of the end zone rule. If you watch the Clemson A&M game, this is not the first time we've talked about this, and it won't Which be the last Which was a fantastic time. game, by the way. That that is absolutely taken away from A and M having a shot to win this thing. Well, let's explain from, it to me. Like they they drive like ninety nine and and you know nine tenths of the field. Yep. And and then you fumble out of the end zone, and and it didn't even look like it was a fumble out of the end zone. That's right. Like that's why Jimbo was so mad. So here's here's my problem. They called the rule right probably. I, I don't know if it went out of the end zone or not, but either way, here, whether it was right or wrong, the rule is wrong. And, my, my, and everybody keeps saying, oh, well, we need to make it to where it's not such a big penalty. Uh, Rich Eisen came out on Twitter and said, move it back to the 20. Like, yes, give the offense the ball in the 20, not the defense the ball in the 20. So, like, make it like a reverse touchback. Somebody else um, came out and said – that they think it should go back to the original line of scrimmage. This is where you're all wrong. You're all wrong. You play the game a 100-yard field, okay? You change a rule based on what happens at an imaginary point in the field, and that's wrong. If you fumble the ball from the 30 to the 27 out of bounds, it goes back to – let me turn my phone off. It goes. <laughs> it goes back to – the the 30 where you yeah. fumbled it because the rule is you cannot fumble the ball forward but when you get into the end zone area if you fumble it forward and it goes out of the end zone they all of a sudden make this magical rule that somehow changes everything why does it not go back to the place where they fought the the original fumble occurred the same rule already happens you cannot fumble it forward the player fumbled it. It went out of bounds. Nobody recovered it. So, therefore, it goes back to where it was originally fumbled, and you start play from there. Whether yeah. it be first down, fourth down, third down, whatever the situation, whatever the scenario, that's where the line of scrimmage now starts because it goes back to where you fumbled it. You cannot fumble the ball forward. This is not a hard thing to fix. We no. don't need to recreate new rules and make it more complicated than it already is. I agree with you. And I knew I, I was watching that game, and immediately, because you and I talked about that this summer. We've talked about it every year, because yeah. every, every year this is going to happen. It's going to happen in the NFL. It's going to happen all the time, and it really ticks me off. Yeah, I can uh, I can understand. I can understand. Um, aside from that, A&M did get a three and out, and they did get the ball back, and they did drive down the field. Yep. And they scored, and they didn't get the two-point conversion, but this looks like a pretty good A and M team. No, A and M looked good. They looked impressive. Um, Jimbo's got the thing rolling. The defense of Clemson is good, but but they're not man, perfect. They, they're not. That's Kellen Mond threw for three hundred and fifty five yards in the second half. That's the most in a half ever by a Dabo Sweeney coach team. Um, I, look, I, I can't. A and M's got players, like and Kellen Mond can throw the football. I was surprised. The uh, the Rodgers kid for A&M, the wide receiver, yep. looks like the Predator. He is frightening, and he is awesome. 
it was it was a really exciting game. Yeah, it and was I great. Just great hate, atmosphere. I hate that we 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 end a great game. One of the few, there was only like three or four really good games to watch all all Saturday. Out of the 80-something games that were played, three good ones, okay? This is one of the good ones. And it ends because we've got some bullcrap rule that nobody can explain or it, it makes sense of. Well, it didn't end because of the rule, but it didn't help things. I'm going to tell we'll you this. The, the fumble happened. If the fumble doesn't happen and they kick a field goal, okay? Let's say they don't get the touchdown. Clemson's defense is unbelievable. Let's just give them the field goal, okay? If, and then if they get the another rule, three and out. And, they and then, the, they, then they kick off. They get the three and out that they got when they punt it. Now they probably have to get less field than they had to that time because instead of punting and being on, they kick off. Now they get three and out. They go. They score the same way they score. They don't even need the extra point. They still win the game. Yeah. Yeah, it, it changes. You're right. It completely changes things. Really pisses me off to take a win away from a team that did everything right. Yeah. Um, let's jump into number two. November 1986. How old were you in November 1986? Four. Four. Okay. I was three. I was I was about to turn four. Uh, since then, Kentucky had lost 31 straight times to Florida. 27-16 to 16 last night, Kentucky ran for 303 yards and pretty much dominated the line of scrimmage. It was impressive to watch. I ask you this. If something bananas goes on in the Georgia game with Kentucky, could this Kentucky team win the SEC East? No, no. That might be asking a bit much, right? No, you're, I got a little fired up. You're last working. Night. You're working under assumption that. For, so, so my take on this, which which you've you've given, you've taken up. That's fine. You you got the Florida Kentucky game. My take was football karma is real, and it has just taken eight years for us to realize that Urban Meyer left a cancer living in Florida. Yeah, and. It doesn't matter what coach you put there. They can't figure this thing out. Something bad is going on, um, and, and I, I can't explain it. I think Dan Mullins is a good coach. I They got outplayed, and they didn't look like they were ready for, for Kentucky. I agree. I think he got outcoached. That doesn't happen a lot with Dan. Dan is – I like to make fun of him. I like to mock him and pick on him. I'm not a huge fan of his. He's still a really good coach. I could not figure out why this line – obviously, this is one of my gambling wins. Yeah. But I couldn't figure out why the line was 14 and a half. Three of the last four years, it has been a it's always, possession it's, game. It's been close no matter what the situation yeah. was. Yeah. And so – and it didn't matter if it was in Gainesville or not. Like, And I – Felipe Franks. I mean – I don't have an answer. Yeah. I can't explain. I, <laughs> I don't know. I can't explain. All last year, everyone kept telling me, this guy's a stud. I need to see it. Never saw it. Started this season. All Florida's going to be good. Dan Mullins could make anybody a good quarterback, and Felipe Franks is already a stud. I, I just don't know where we get this. He's a stud. I don't he's, know. He's just a dude. Yeah, he's he's a dude. He he was a stud recruit coming in, yeah. and then nothing happened with him. Uh, what's your number three? So the next one I'm going to go with is if you are an FBS team, if you are a power program, and you play an FCS school or one of these bullcrap non FBS schools that nobody cares about, i.e., I'm going to take out like Oregon State and Rutgers. Are you talking about power conference teams? Or? No, no, no. If, if, you're, if you're a big boy, let me just okay. get to this. Okay, if you're a big boy. Then, you're, then your stats against FCS and these little high school teams should not count, they should not matter. The record should not show in the game, in, in the final season at all. And it should never be spoken of. Yesterday, I watched, and ESPN continued to play highlights of LSU beating up a high school team and Wisconsin beating up a high school team and all of these big schools over and over and over again. And I just don't care. And as soon as I see Wisconsin highlight coming up, I change the channel. I'm not giving you my business. I'm not giving you I'm not watching these games. I'm not paying attention to them. I don't other than this point right here, I'm never going to speak of them. When when I'm trying to figure out who's the Heisman Trophy winner, I'm going to subtract all of the stats that you created against these bullcrap programs. I disagree with these games vehemently. I don't want anything to do with them. 
Ohio State, please stop pounding your chest that you're the only team in the program with two Power 5 wins. Your wins are against Rutgers and Oregon State. There's like 19 non-Power 5 teams that would be 30-point favorites against those teams as well. <laughs> I don't know about 30 points. But, but yes, I, I do agree with you. Uh, you saw Eastern Michigan go on the road and beat Purdue this weekend. One of my gambling losses. I don't understand Jeff Brom. I don't. I can't figure that out. But I'm I'm with you on that. So you're a proponent of Power Five teams play all Power Five teams. Yeah, but even then, you can find enough garbage Power Five teams to fill your. Crowd. You can play the games. I'm not upset about playing the games. Nick Saban came out and yelled at Alabama fans for leaving the thing. I would not give you my business. At least they showed up for the first quarter. Yeah. I'm not showing up, and I'm telling everybody else, don't show up for these. Don't give them your business. And when the athletic director calls the big boosters and the big season ticket holders and say, why are you not showing up, saying, don't schedule this garbage. Yeah. And I'll show up. Yeah. But don't give them your business. I don't want to talk about games. There are so few good games in college football anyway. The fact that a few upsets actually happen doesn't justify the 80 other games that are crap. Well, the other side of this is those games from the big boys do fund athletic programs. There's enough money in the NCAA to make sure you can still fund those programs without having to pay those teams to play them. I mean, it, it's, look, if there's Akron, enough money Akron right now, right now, schools seven million right now to play at Nebraska. Are, they should be able to get that anyway. Right now, because schools have so much money and so little things to spend money on because you can't pay the talent, then they are building monstrosities and just huge monuments. Why don't they take the $600 million instead of paying these high school teams to come in and kick the crap out of them? Why don't they just, just somehow funnel it out to these smaller programs? I'm, it's well, a lot easier said than done, yeah. done than, than than you're making it out to be. This is not complicated at all. I'm with you. I, Those I, programs can absolutely still exist, unless the NCAA does something to curtail like the TV contracts and stuff like that. Like if the TV contracts had to go through the NCAA as opposed to the conferences, no, it but might they can be just easy. tax them. They just they're just going to tax the big boy schools to make sure they can give it to the little schools. That's it. It's exactly we, what our government does. We should come up with uh, with some kind of proposal for that because like well, right my now pro- it, my proposal would be to disband the ncaa completely start a whole new conference well if you do that i mean that's you're opening up a whole new can of worms i don't care because it's going to be power five against whatever power five big yeah. boys against big boys medium boys against medium boys which would be much more entertaining boys. much more entertaining yeah i'm down with it number four for me and we we've been rolling uh uh here but we, we got to start uh picking it up georgia dominated South Carolina. Look, I said on the SEC East preview that if Georgia came out and and completely dominated this game, that I would apologize. Georgia fans, I was dead wrong. I am sorry. They don't need your I don't, apology. I understand Gary. that, but it's I told them okay. I would do it. It's not enough to be good. It's not I am enough a, to be better than everybody else. I am a man of my word. You also need other people to grovel at your feet, too. That's bull crap. <laughs> That's bull crap. Look, Georgia looked absolutely all of a top five team yesterday the the initial like okay the interception return to start off the game was not jake bentley's fault nope just bounced right up off the hands stone hands running back and then immediately returned and and from there you could feel the crowd deflated right and as soon as that happens then georgia gets the ball back they come out they score again it's 14 to nothing and then something magical happened. Debo threw a touchdown pass, which was everybody's back to life, everything's good. And then Georgia comes out in the third quarter and scores 21 unanswered, and it is a bloodbath. Um, I mean, it, look, South Carolina needed to be able to at least kind of maintain the line of scrimmage a little bit. I mean, they ran for 54 yards. Georgia ran for 271 that just continues what has happened the last two years. Since Kirby Smart has gotten to Georgia, they have outrushed South Carolina like 900 yards to 150. Yeah, the talent gap is massive I understand between that, the offensive like, line and the running backs. But so, that's, that's why South Carolina had changed their offense to this. Like It's a different type of offense under Brian McClendon. And they still could not find a way 
to get the ball into space or or anything else. Georgia's without question one of the top one, two, or three teams in the country. Yeah. It's not debatable. It's not something we can argue or discuss. They, they've they made that claim, and no one can take it away from them. That's that. Yeah. South Carolina, I thought, was going to be better this year. They're the same old South Carolina. There's there's nothing else to talk about. This is a blowout game that wasn't interesting after the halftime. It just wasn't. Yeah. It was time to move on. What, next one? what down are we on? What what, what we're on to we number on? Uh, number five. Number five. My number five takeaway from this weekend is <laughs> gambling is a sin, <laughs> and like all sins, it's a lot of fun sometimes, and and but but mostly it's just going to leave you full of shame and regret, possibly needing <laughs> a Z pack or it's some touch of penicillin. <laughs> I, I went. I went one and six in my gambling picks. I, I looked back, I, by the way, I that lost. is the worst that you have ever done. In three years of us doing yeah, this. I know. That's the worst you've ever been. I, I lost um, more real money that matters to me than I, I have ever in a single day. No, you did win last week. I, no, no, I did fine last week. I actually made a lot of money last week. Yeah, but so that doesn't, doesn't make hurt. this that doesn't make this week feel any better. I understand. Though. It just understand. doesn't. I've already spent that money. That money's gone, <laughs> and this money is gone as well. And it's just gone. This and isn't your. Never you don't have a gambling back. pot. You oh, don't have a. Oh, I live. The, we're all day to day, Gary. Have yeah, you seen no, the either. way I look? You've seen the way I take care of myself. <laughs> no, I don't live for the week after. We're all day to day. No. <laughs> no, I could kill over tomorrow. Just cash in and blow it off. I make more money next week. I'll spend it next week. There you Sorry. go. Uh, leave the kids nothing. Number six. Have Have we done the the AAC? Do you want that one? You, no, you can do it. We're gonna both. We're gonna both have the. Have, we can both talk about it. Do it. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. The AAC. They are making a power six statement again. South Florida forty nine, Georgia Tech thirty eight, Houston forty five, Arizona eighteen. Did you watch the South Florida Georgia Tech game? Yes. Now that I watched a lot. What of the hell game. was Paul Johnson thinking when when South Florida goes up forty two to thirty eight? They get the ball back with like five minutes left. Like there's plenty of time. He's got three timeouts in five minutes. They have run at that point for four hundred and sixteen yards. They've only passed for a hundred. We know that their quarterback is a career less than 50 percent completion percentage guy and he drops back to pass three straight times which in turn cost him another tu- or another touchdown if if you are going to apologize to anyone on this show your apology needs to be to charlie strong for the lack of respect that you have given that man over the years and i have stood <laughs> by him i want you to know charlie if you listen to this or see it or get it sent to you that I've supported you. I think you're a top tier level coach. I I don't care that you lost a ton of talent and you're bringing in all new guys that nobody's ever heard. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He is a great coach. Not a good coach. He is a great coach. He he will not be out coached in a single game that he plays this year. There will be nobody on the other side that he will line up against that's better than him the whole season. South Florida is really good at football. Blake Barnett looks like and Blake Barnett a baller. Finally found a home, and he's been trying to tell everybody. Tried to tell Alabama, I'm good at football. He tried to tell Arizona, I'm good at no, football. Arizona, Arizona State, State. Yeah. I, I, I do that all the time. It's all good. Just, I hey, we'll, we'll get to Arizona in a yeah. little bit. But. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then finally, Charlie's like, I think this kid might be good at football. I'm going to let him play. I'm actually going to let him play football. Yeah. And then he goes out and, does, and he goes out and it like, looks great. Holy crap! Looks great. My my only tweak on what you had to say about the power. Con- this may be making another. No, they are a power six. There is a power six. It needs to be talked about. They need to be given the respect and the credit they deserve from top to bottom. This conference is better than the Big Twelve. It's better than the Pac Twelve, and it's better than the ACC. It just is. Now, no. Clemson is better. Yes, Clemson is going to be probably better than the top guy. And Oklahoma is probably better than the top guy. After that, everything's a question mark. And the yeah. AAC might be favored in all of those games. It's it's possible. It's very possible. That's real. They need to talk the, about it. Need to get the respect. Let's move on uh, to, uh, to the next one. What is this? Uh, it's seven. We're living in bizarro world in the state of Arizona. <laughs> 
That was one thing I wanted to bring up that Khalil Tate I, I can't, yesterday I can't, against Houston had seven runs for eight yards. I cannot I cannot figure out what is going on in the state of Arizona. I thought Kevin Sumlin was a good coach. I thought Khalil Tate was a transcendent quarterback, and I thought they were going to maybe not win, but at least compete in the Pac-12 and, and be like a school we could talk about and exciting to watch. I also thought Arizona State and Herm Edwards was old man football and not going to be very good. Hey, they good. might still be old man football. Like and, that is that is still I, old man football. And I cannot and I cannot figure out for the life of me how one team beat a team that I absolutely respect and and think is good and well coached and well prepared in Michigan State and the other team got blown out by Major Applewhite. <laughs> is hang on a group of five team maybe like yeah. the fourth or fifth fifth best team in the group of five team. Oh yeah. And they smoked them. They housed them. And at no point in time did Arizona have a chance. From the time the kickoff started and it was 0-0, about 30 seconds went before Arizona said, we have no chance of winning this game. You know what was what's really funny to me? The announcers in that game, and by the way, I've got three to four games on at all times. So I'm like, I'm just trying to but see what wise. I can see. There aren't three or four good games. I understand, but I'm trying to at least see. Just a waste of time. No, I'm just looking at. At my like with my eyeballs at, at what's going on. That way I can I can keep having five and two weeks, right? Uh, okay. So all right, sure. Um, Hard so no, the, the deal here is they kept talking about oh it's it's just it's a hundred degrees and on the field it's registering a hundred and eighteen or whatever it was, and I'm they're talking about it like it's an advantage for Houston. And I'm like Arizona is hot too. No, but no, I would say okay. I'm not. This is not an excuse. I didn't bring it up as an excuse, but there's a way difference between Arizona heat and Houston heat. Well, they were using the Hume, Arizona heat last night Hume, as Hume, as an excuse for Michigan State. Yeah, but the one one team I is understand a, that one you, team is a cold weather team and the other team is not. Yeah. One team has never lived in humidity before in the history of their life, and then they come to one of the most humid places on earth. Uh, you, yeah, I mean you got a point. You I mean, point. so that that I'm gonna give the announcers. Listen. They're trying to make something interesting in a blowout game. Yeah. That, that is a job. I, announcing college football is something there's no way I'd want to do because you might go your entire year and not get a good game. Oh, that would just suck, wouldn't it? But how many of these guys are going to do that? No, you're right. Yeah, They're well, just no, going to get hey, all blowouts. Joe Tessitore, he never had a problem. <laughs> Uh, the test effect was uh, was real. What do you got? Uh, next one up, Stanford and Bryce Love. They got things rolling. 17-3 to over USC. I told you last week. St- look, Bryce Love averaged like 7.1 yards a carry against USC in both games last year. Last night, 22 rushes, 136 yards, one touchdown. David Shaw is now 8-4 and four against USC in the last 10 years. Uh Look, that's the fewest points that USC has scored against Stanford since 1941. It's not good. 1941. Three, now, look, here's the deal. Total yardage, about even. Rushing yardage, about even. USC had three turnovers. Yeah. And KJ Costello looked way more like he belonged in that game as opposed to JT Daniels. Way more. KJ Costello ended a uh, 16 out of 27, 183 yards, one touchdown. Didn't need to do anything crazy. 17-3. to three. Stanford looks good. What number are we on? Uh, man, I don't even know. That was uh, that was eight. Eight. So we got so nine, got 10, nine. 11. All right. I got two more. All right. Willie Taggart might want to find something else to do in this life other than coach football. I don't know what happened with them last night. Like, I don't know if he would be a good, like, electrician or – What's it? Here's the thing. Insurance. He is the I mean, second highest he, against he might, the spread percentage. He might coach. be like a great like registered nurse. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I, you know. I think, I think you were right football? about that culture problem down at Florida State. You were dead on on that. It's bad because like they don't get up for games that they. Okay, it's bad. It's it, obviously they have talent there, right? But it, it's the same thing that that's going on at Texas right now. Like, I really think Florida State and Texas are very similar. Maybe. Because Texas ran into an issue with Tulsa last night. They won 28-21. to Did not look good. Uh, I don't know. But, yeah, that was that was a little bit, little bit crazy. Uh, all right, my next one up. 
man, there's so many that we need to get to. Uh, there's not. There's not. You get one more. Okay. Let's talk about... Will North Carolina's Larry Fedora survive this season? No. That was quick. He, look, I brought up a few months ago about his CTE talk and how that might be a, a problem. Eh. Like, now he opens the season with losses at Cal and at East Carolina. 41-19, to 19, he gets beat by East Carolina. His next four games, Central Florida. Going to lose that one. Pittsburgh. At Miami. And Virginia Tech. That's 0-6 out the gate. Now, the back half of the schedule is a little easier, but, like... I don't know. Look, if he gets fired, it will have nothing to do with the CTE talk, and it will have everything to do with the fact that... East Carolina lost good. last week to I North know. Carolina a and T. I I know. I know. So, no. No, he's not going to last good the season. Gracious. He's going to be fired. Oh, I got two to choose from. I'm, I'm, we'll go with this. We talked about this a little bit last week, and then I'll just say this. There is no greater improvement. Every coach throughout college football, pro football, everything has always said this. There's no greater improvement improvement a team can do throughout the season, beginning of the season, or anything other than between week one and two. Nebraska needed that week one game that they lost. That was one of the things that I had down here. They absolutely uh, needed that game, and it well, showed. Here's the thing: they, they made they made clock management decisions. That's that were one bad. of the points I was going to make. But but it's not. I don't think that he's just bad at clock management, though. I think that this is a situation where you need to run through game scenarios. You need to actually play a game from start to finish. You need to see what communication is like on your sideline. You need to know everybody just needs to be able to do it. Even if it's against a high school team, even if it is kicking the crap out of somebody, you need to run through it so you can go through all these drills that are a part of a game. Not having that is an absolute disadvantage. Yeah. Which I could tie into my other one. We'll make this all in one. Mother Nature is the absolute equalizer in football. That's uh, That Navy Memphis game, it, it absolutely Cost equalizes me things. An amount of money that I'm yeah. not willing to talk about. Let's here. Let's do the extra points real quick. Kansas snapped oh. a 46 game losing streak, 31 to seven at or 46 game road losing streak, dated back to 2009. Uh, they beat Central Michigan 31 to seven. Iowa's defense is suffocating. We didn't talk about that, um, but they beat Iowa State 13 to three. Mississippi State smoked Kansas State. Um, let's see what was the last one. Oh, apparently Jalen Hurts is not redshirting. So it went seven out of nine for ninety-two yards and uh, two touchdowns. Looked really good. Uh, it was it was fun to see him and Tua hugging it out, congratulating each other, and all that. Things look good in Tuscaloosa. Uh, yeah, but Nebraska with Adrian Martinez, this is ties into your thing. With him, they can win seven to eight games. Without him, they are like a four-win football team. That kid was unreal. His stats yesterday, 15 out of 20 for 187 yards passing, one, uh, one touchdown, one pick, 15 rushes, 117 yards, and two touchdowns. And then he leaves the game, and they the clock management goes haywire. They, they've only got a walk-on sophomore backup quarterback. That's the only other quarterback on the roster. Like hey, we, we had paid attention to it where, like, every time – Kids were getting beat out at Nebraska. They were transferring, and Nebraska was letting them out of their out of their scholarship. They were letting them go, which is what you're supposed to do. But man, like that leaves them in a very serious situation because no, if but this Scott kid, Frost will get people that can stay eventually. Yeah, eventually. You, you can't speak for what the other coaches were doing recruiting wise. Uh, understandable, understandable. But yeah, it was uh, it was a crazy weekend. Um, we talked about Arizona State. But that the way that game ended last night, yeah, bonkers, absolutely bonkers. You didn't stay up for it, but it was like one thirty in the morning Central Time. So of course it was like what two thirty East Coast. Kneeling three straight times to end the college football game, to to kick a field goal with three seconds left. I don't know of many college coaches that would do that. And Herm Edwards, he he trusts his players, but to watch. Mark D'Antonio on the sideline. There's nothing wrong with that. I think no, that's there's nothing wrong the with right it. coaching move. There's 
A hundred percent. But we talked about it being old man football, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know if that's old man football. That is straight it's, up NFL football. Well, it's winning a game. It is winning a game. They don't game. care about anything but winning the game. Yeah. And that's he did what he was supposed to. Arizona State might be a contender in that Pac-12, man. Oh, they could be. They Look, they held Michigan State to 63 yards rushing. I didn't, I didn't see that before the season started. And neither I did I. I just didn't. I missed it. Well, you, I brought it up last week. You remember I, I said they it was uh, UT it's San Antonio, nobody. but they it was thirty four rushes for two doesn't yards. Matter. Doesn't matter. The stats don't count, and it doesn't matter. You right, played well, a high school team. How about this against Michigan State? Now the stats matter. They gave up sixty three yards but that's, rushing. But that's it. the stats matter against Michigan State. They didn't matter the week before. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, that's going to wrap up the uh, the college football week two recap. <laughs>